Welcome to part three of my four-part series, Saving for School. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to save while you're in school and it's too late to go back. Recently, I did a Kin Community Google Hangout with five other awesome, financially savvy ladies from across North America. And we were talking about ways that newbie freshmen can keep their costs down when they're in school. So here's a couple of the highlights, and I definitely suggest that you check out the link below to see the rest of that whole conversation, because it was pretty awesome. One of the biggest expenses besides tuition is your housing cost when you start your degree. It can be about $15,000 a year for one student to live on campus with a meal plan. So make sure that you really, really debate your housing costs. Staying at home and commuting can save you thousands and thousands of dollars over the lifetime of your education. And if that's not an option, looking into living on campus versus renting a place yourself, just make sure you do homework. Renting on your own can seem cheaper, but you just wanna make sure that you're adding in things like food and utilities, cable, internet, all the extra stuff that goes with having your own place and choose the cheaper option. So a second tip that came up in our conversation was talking about keeping your meal plan costs down if you're living on campus. There are a ton of options when it comes to meal plans and some of them are extravagant. You're probably not gonna eat every single meal in the cafeteria, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is really, really, really expensive. You might not even be awake by the time they stop serving breakfast. So try keeping things in your dorm room like cereal, granola bars, so that you don't have to pick a meal plan option that serves breakfast. And look at your schedule when it comes to lunch. Are you even gonna be able to make it to the calf five days a week to eat it? Choose the right meal plan so that you can keep your costs down. A third tip that came up that was pretty cool was how to save money on your books. And books are a source of financial anxiety for all of us. A lot of universities and colleges these days are actually renting out textbooks, which is pretty cool because it keeps your costs down, plus you can guarantee that it's the proper edition needed for school that year. Then there's the age old getting used textbooks, buying them online, but just make sure that you talk to your prof first to make sure that it's the proper edition that's needed that year for school. Otherwise, it's just a waste of money. But if you ended up buying the actual textbooks, take care of them throughout the school year so that you can sell them again online to a student coming up next semester. Another thing that we talked about was really interesting for me because it's a tip that you don't hear often when you're talking about how to keep your costs down at school. It's how to bring money in. Checking out what your financial aid office has to offer you. Grants, scholarships, loan programs. Because if you don't do this necessary research, you could be leaving money on the table. So my fifth tip is to graduate on time. It's really expensive to go to school, and if you don't graduate on time, you're looking at yet another year of all of those tuition fees, books, and housing costs yet again. It's expensive to do a victory lap, so just make sure you study hard. And last but not least, one of the things that came up time and time again in our conversation was to just watch how much student debt or credit card debt you incur over your entire four-year degree. I know that university is bonding time and going out is awesome, but just make sure you watch your costs because everything that you put on that credit card, you're gonna have to pay it back one day. It's not free money. So just make sure that you're keeping your finances in the forefront of your mind when you're making decisions during those four years. There was a ton of different tips that we talked about in that conversation and everyone should be watching it. So click on the link below make yourself a cup of tea and sit back and listen to all of the financial savviness and save yourself a ton of money when you're in school. So tune in next week for our fourth and final part of Saving for School series. We're gonna be talking about what happens to the money that's inside the RESP if your baby doesn't go to school. You should subscribe if you think it's way more fun to put your bar tab on a credit card.